testing a smart filament sensor that not only saves your prints when the filament runs out, but also when it jams. If you've ever had a 3D print fail from the filament running out, you'll understand how frustrating it can be. Not only the waste of time, but also the waste of material. Filament runout sensors have been popular as an aftermarket upgrade for some time, but are increasingly seen in new 3D printers. There's only one problem. They only protect you when the filament runs out. They have no way of detecting when there's a jam or a clog that also causes a failed print. This smart filament sensor can achieve just that. It works extremely well in most situations with one slight catch. Let's get into it. The product we're testing is the Big Tree Tech Smart Filament Sensor. It's designed for 1.75mm filament and it has some big advantages over a traditional runout sensor that we'll cover in this video. The price is $20 US on Amazon and a couple of dollars cheaper on AliExpress. The sensors you're seeing in this video were purchased with my own money and here's what comes in the box. It's well packaged and we have the actual filament sensor. It's got an injection molded plastic housing. We've got some PTFE tube and fittings as well as the cable to connect to the main board. On the sensor end, it's actually a four pin connector but only three wires are used. The other end of the cable goes into the main board with a three pin JST plug. Let's compare to a traditional runout sensor to work out why this one is smart. A normal sensor has two states, triggered or untriggered, and that's because on the inside we have a micro switch which is pressed by the filament. That on off signal is fed to the firmware which means we can detect when the filament runs out. However, there's other situations like a jam from a tangled spool of filament, the internal switch is still pressed so no error will be triggered. Therefore, our traditional filament runout sensor is good at detecting when the filament spool runs empty, but not much else. Let's open up the smart Big Tree Tech sensor to see what makes it different. As the filament moves through the center, it turns these two bearings. So if the fit is right, they'll accurately be able to measure the filament movement. The bearings are connected to this rubber wheel, which is connected to an encoder. This encoder wheel is very similar to the scroll wheel found on your common computer mouse. And electronically, it works in exactly the same way as the encoder wheel that comes with your LCD. As the filament is pulled through the smart sensor, it turns the encoder wheel and a pulse is sent for every 7mm of filament. While printing, if the firmware no longer receives the pulse, it knows the filament must be jammed and takes action. Setting up the firmware is fairly straightforward we need to uncomment define filament runout sensor, define the filament runout distance millimeters as seven and uncomment define filament motion sensor. Also in configuration.h, we need to uncomment define nozzle park feature if it's not already done. In configuration underscore adv.h, we need to uncomment define advanced pause feature. There's lots of settings you can alter here, but generally I leave them on default. The final thing we need to check is the pins file for our board. Most of them have a filament runout pin already assigned. Here we're looking at the SKR Mini E3 version 2 and we can see that we plug it into E0 stop. For an SKR version 1.4, we can see we're actually set up for two filament runout pins, E0 DET and E1 DET. If this is missing from your pins file, there's nothing to stop you from specifying a pin yourself. After flashing the firmware, we can plug in our 3-pin cable to the main board. For my board, as the firmware told me, I would be plugging into the port labelled E0 stop. In case it's not clear for your board, there is an instruction manual on the Big Tree Tech GitHub. It's got the pins out of the sensor labelled and I'll link this document in the video description. As for physical mounting, I had the very temporary solution of just letting the filament hold it up above my direct drive extruder. However, if we search for smart filament sensor on Thingiverse, we'll find a range of designs for mounting the sensor in various orientations, many of which involve printing a new rear housing that then allow the sensor to clip somewhere onto the frame. In terms of loading the filament sensor, if it gets stuck, just rotate and wiggle. It makes no difference whether you load it from one side or the other. 
All that matters is that the encoder is turning, which you can check by looking through the opening. Before we start a print, we need to check in the configuration menu of the LCD that the runout sensor is turned on. And if we want it permanently to be on, we need to scroll down and click on store settings. We can now test by starting a print and employing our favorite ninja to snip the filament. Once it's pulled through the sensor, the pulse will no longer be sent to the firmware. So within just a few seconds, we'll have the error message on the LCD, and then we can go through the process for changing the filament. The first step is the automatic ejection of the filament from the extruder. After that, we'll be asked to insert new filament and confirm with the button press. The printer will then load the filament, priming the nozzle. We collect the waste from the end of the nozzle and then tell the print to continue. It will then return back to the same position where it paused and continue printing with the newly loaded filament. For this test, I changed from red to blue and we can see the blue filament coming through perfectly. So we've matched the performance of the filament running out, but how about a different test? How about simulating when the spool of filament gets tangled and can no longer be fed to the machine? For this, I simply clamped the spool of filament with my hand so it couldn't rotate. And once again, within a few seconds, I had the filament warning message on the LCD and the printer paused for me to fix the problem. At this stage, I changed back to red filament, purged it from the nozzle and clicked the button for the print to resume once more. Marlin firmware handles this event really well so just like the first time, it went back to the correct location and resumed the print seamlessly. The only artifact afterwards was the rough area where the extruder was tugging on the stiff filament. Another type of test I did was compressing the extruder so the drive gear could no longer grip the filament. The net result is that the filament is no longer traveling through the smart sensor, no pulses are sent from the sensor to the firmware, so the firmware pauses the print and asks the user to fix the problem. On this single print, I did this numerous times and every time it worked flawlessly. The performance of the sensor is excellent in a range of situations. So not only will it protect from when the filament runs out, it will also give you insurance from things like a tangled spool or some sort of blockage which causes the hobbed gear to dig a trench in the filament and stop extruding. If we compare performance compared to our traditional sensor, we can now detect a range of situations. Basically, any time the filament is not moving through the sensor, the same amount the firmware is expecting. So far, the method we've used has Marlin reading from an SD card, processing the commands and making the printer print. When a problem with the filament was detected using the filament sensor, Marlin could then pause the print and ask the user to change the filament using the LCD. Filament runout detection in Marlin relies on an attached LCD to be able to complete the necessary procedures. And once they're done, it will resume and the whole system works quite well. But what if you prefer to do your printing from an aftermarket touchscreen, or like many, many people, run your printer using Octoprint? These two options or a tethered computer all work in the same way in that they're a host device that connects to our firmware via a serial connection. During a print, they send G-code line by line to Marlin, so in this situation, the filament runout sensor will be useless. Because the firmware is being controlled externally, instead of by the LCD, we have two likely failures. The first is that the filament runout is ignored, resulting in a failed print. The second outcome is that the printer becomes stuck because the required LCD isn't available to complete the filament change. In this case, all you can do is restart the printer. The solution is to connect the filament runout sensor to the host device instead of the main board. So when the error is received, the host device will pause the print, alert the user to fix the problem, and then resume when the user is ready. For our traditional filament runout sensors, we can connect them directly to the Raspberry Pi and then install a filament runout sensor plugin. But unfortunately, at the time of recording, None of these plugins are compatible with the constant pulses sent by the Big Tree Tech Smart Filament Sensor. For the Big Tree Tech TFT touchscreens, there's actually a filament runout port in the back of the unit for this purpose. And I've tested this before with a traditional filament runout sensor. Connected directly to the TFT, the appropriate message comes up on the interface and the filament change can occur. 
the smart sensor is meant to be compatible in the same way. According to their instructions, we locate this port on the back of the TFT, plug in the smart filament runout sensor. In configuration advanced for Marlin, uncomment define M114 detail. Head to the GitHub for the TFT and download the config.ini file. In the filament runout settings section, set it to 2 for smart and double check the runout distance is set to 7. When you put this file on an SD card and boot up the printer, the configuration will update on the TFT. And the last step is going to the settings menu, feature, and making sure filament runout is set to smart. But it just doesn't work. Every time I tested this, the filament would run in with no response at all from the TFT. I quadruple checked the manual, updated the firmware for the TFT, experimented with runout inverting and filament runout distance in the INI file, but the print always failed with the same result. No response from the TFT after the filament had run out. I spent a lot of time searching the issue section of their GitHub and I couldn't find anyone else who could get it working in this configuration. In summary, when printing from a traditional Marlin LCD, this filament sensor works flawlessly and I was able to get repeated good results. If you mainly print with Octoprint, well, you're going to have to wait until a plugin becomes available compatible with the encoder on this sensor. And if you're printing from a Big Tree Tech TFT, I guess like me, you're going to have to wait for a firmware update to come out to make it compatible as advertised. If you've got any thoughts or solutions to what you've seen in this video, please leave them down below in the comment section. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, happy 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you like the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.